Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in London for the film festival. Maybe we could begin with a brief introduction to this film, Foe. What can people expect when they watch it? Well, I mean, I think Garth and I talked about right from the beginning of working on the screenplay that we hoped people would interpret this story in a variety of different ways. You know, I, that, that was sort of in my mind as I was writing the novel um, that I loved the idea for books and films um, that the people who are either reading or viewing are part of it and that we're not trying to tell them what to think necessarily. So for me, the most exciting thought is that people will bring a distinct and personal interpretation to the story that will ideally create some kind of discussion. So if, if someone else they know sees it, that they will talk about it. I think for me, that's the most exciting thing that someone could take from it is that it generates thoughts and discussions, you know. And thinking about the genesis of the project, um, you know, when did you initially get the spark of the idea for your book? And, and then, you know, how did that, I guess, evolve and writing it together into this incredible film that we see now? Well, you know, it's, uh, it, it goes back almost a decade now. You know, I, I think it was probably around 2014 that the idea, my first novel was kind of finished and hadn't come out yet. And so but instead of, you know, sitting around worrying about how that was going to be received, which I'm, I tend to do, I thought I need to be productive here and have a new idea. And so I started thinking about various things that I was interested in and that kind of I, I felt a personal connection to. Or um, So one of those things was the idea of space. And I, I, at some, I knew at some point I wanted to write about space in some kind of fictional context. Um, AI was something that was intriguing at the time. It, it was not... Um, the kind of didn't have the cultural relevance that it has now and so for me that was kind of intriguing and so I started with this image of a couple in a very isolated old farmhouse just the two of them and it felt confining to me and as I worked on this story on the novel I started to realize that these this element of space and the AI part really um, were not the heart of the story you know they were just um, sort of techniques used to get at what I was really interested in writing about, which was this relationship between these two people and the type, the style of relationship and how that relationship was not affected by one dramatic act that we often see depicted sort of an affair maybe or something like that, but that was disrupted sort of slowly over time, sort of more decaying, you know. And that was really interesting to me and kind of scary, you know, to, to think about that living in that st type of relationship. And so I just slowly found that as I wrote. And once the book came out and, you know, a few years later, and then Garth came on board as the director and, and, and he and I started working together on the screenplay, it was so exciting to ha now have a collaborator. You know, I'd written the novel for a few years on my own and and to now be able to discuss the characters with someone else and to get ideas and new ideas, fresh thoughts. And it felt like I got to revisit the characters that I was really interested in, the ideas, but now with someone else. And that is, was really enjoyable to just have discussions and make new discoveries with Garth along the way. And, and for you kind of putting it into this visual language, I mean, yeah. I love how almost you use the genre as a way to sort of make tangible, make manifest the ideas that you're exploring in their relationship, you know, the, the sort of desolate landscape and, and the sort of stuck in time house contrasting to the, the period we're actually yeah. in. That's what I loved about the book and and I really saw the potential in the movie because it was such, a, such an unusual and creative way to kind of just explore this relationship um, for all those reasons. I mean, when I read the book, it was... Um, just had all the hallmarks of an old movie, you know, like a Hitchcockian set up The Stranger in the Night and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. It, all those kind of movies that I loved were kind of coming through the material, but then it just became this very contemporary discussion around a relationship and what happens to a relationship over time and um, using the visual landscapes to kind of um, express the greater metaphors of that relationship decay was really fascinating. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was an absolute creative joy. And how do you kind of pull some of these things off? I mean, just even the way that the landscape is captured, it's kind of desolate, but also beautiful at times. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I guess, uh, you know, it's it's in front of our faces all the time. You know, sometimes we're drawn, like there is, there is beauty and death. Um, and there's something about uh, how we're blind to what's really happening. 
Does that make sense? Um, but, you know, it was just also in terms of the designing the, the, the future world, we want to do something that felt refreshing and, and kind of believable and, um, and, 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 and not so specific. So like in a way, these kind of colorful worlds became our other planet and um, kind of expressed the complexities of how we feel about a dying planet, you know. And kind of the house, you know, in a way, it's like the sort of patriarchal relationship <laughs> that they're stuck in, you know, her desperately trying to water this tree, you know, not wanting to let go, wanting to, to find life somewhere. Yeah, just what they're holding on to, what Junior's holding on to, but it's just dying, it's, it's, there's just no life left. Yes, and Hen's just struggling to hold on to anything that's living. And, you know, Saoirse Ronan and, and Paul Mescal, it's almost unbelievable we haven't seen them on screen before. I know. Uh, we knew it was going to be amazing, but just how committed they are to the roles, the sort of the nth degree, the nuances of how their dynamic changes. How did you decide on, on each of them and seeing them together on screen? What was that like? Well, Saoirse was, um, he, casting Hen was the most, was what was the biggest priority and um, wanted to find a character that emanated uh, this kind of inner light. Um, and Sersha has that, you know, no matter what character she plays, you know, her beautiful personality kind of shines through. It's unaffected on screen. And um, that was important to me for lots of reasons, because in a way that's what's precious in the story. And, um, and that's what she's fighting for. And I wanted to see that in the middle of that kind of dystopian world. Um, so very lucky to get Sersha on board. And then um, yeah, I met Paul in Sydney um, in Australia and he was crazy about the role and I just was really struck by, uh, really struck by him and um, and his take on on the on the character, and and you could just see there'd be a beautiful chemistry between these two, um, and their shared Irish heritage really helped the believability of the relationship on screen, and they were just passionate about it, so that was really exciting. And when you come out the cinema, I just felt like I was just so I had so much to kind of sort through in my yep. own mind, and that feeling of you know time's running out in terms of the climate change exactly. thing, governments are putting money into the wrong places, but also this idea of not taking someone for granted exactly. and how all of that kind of feeds into, it makes you come out and want to grasp life with two hands. That's, that's exactly, that's what we hope. <laughs> that's the hope. And I think even just yeah. talking again about the, the landscape, I mean, that really is sort of a visual representation of the, mm -hmm. of the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, it is, there is beauty in there, but it is kind of dying. And it's sort of how Junior exists mm -hmm. within his relationship. You know, he, he's kind of, he's not really seeing Hen anymore. You know, the beginning of a relationship, it's exciting, it's new, you don't know the person, so you're learning. But if you if you stop feeling that, if you kind of just assume that that's always going to be there, um, it, it's it's not going to be healthy. Um, and that's sort of the state that Junior is in. He just, he feels like, you know, he's married, he's done that, so now that's done. He doesn't have to really think about that anymore. It's just always going to be there. And in a way, that's obviously how a lot of people exist within the world, the natural world. It's this beautiful thing, but we sort of lost those feelings of wonder and yeah. the magic of just everything that's around us. And if I think, in my mind, it's a scary thought to think about just zooming in on a particular relationship and thinking about existing like that in a relationship. Um, it, it's probably not going to end well. Yeah. Did you want to add anything quickly? No, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing that with me, and I really can't wait for everyone else to have the chance to see Foe. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the question. <laughs>